you know how y'all black people look at us and say, damn, why is Chico driving that badass truck? Why is Amigo having that badass car? You know how that is? We stick together. Us Hispanics, we work together. We help each other out. As a Hispanic, you know what I have seen with black people? You guys are always trying to compete against each other. Who's got the who's got the better car? Who's got better the better truck? Who's got the better <laughs> Always comparing each other's shit. Always trying to fight each other. Always trying to put each other down. <clears throat> y'all don't you need to work together. Like us Hispanics do. That's the difference between Hispanics and black people. That's why <clears throat> a Hispanic starts a business. Most of the time he's successful. Because he's not doing it all by himself. He's got help. That message this Hispanic man sent is clear and it's strong. And for some people, you would consider it to be tough love. But obviously, he's in a community that a lot of blacks would say is competing for our position in America. And I want to talk about this because I've been covering, you know, John Leguizamo and the, you know, he, we built this country topic what Hispanics are trying to do in America. They're forcing themselves into industries. And what I'm seeing in the comments is a lot of black delusion. Some of the African-Americans in the comments section, um, some of you brothers are, are out here living in an island that don't exist. You know, that's not true. They're not that united. They're not doing this. They're not doing that. And bro, like, where do you live? They're the largest voting block in America. They have an economy, $1.2 trillion more than us. And you're making excuses as to why they are not united. Well, okay. Do you hear what the guy had to say? The guy is saying that us as a group, you don't work together. You don't help your people. And that's why you don't have anything. Right now. I know what you guys are going to say. That's that's babble. That's deflection. That's everything. Right. Okay. Let me play another clip from you. You guys know him, okay? Dr. Claude Anderson. So I wanna make it very clear that Dr. Claude Anderson, who is an, an advocate for African-Americans, one of the greatest. What did Dr. Claude Anderson say in 1995? And what is he saying now in 2023? Let's play that clip from that video. And that black folk are still fighting for self-sufficiency and competitiveness in this country and that we must come together quickly or what risk being a permanent underclass in the society. One of the alarming predictions you make in the book is, uh, is along those lines. You mentioned that blacks will be pretty much a permanent underclass in America by the year 2015. Why the year 2015? 2015 because what, I, what I've concluded from analysis is that there are gonna be a converging of, of social factors nationally and internationally that's going to place blacks in a permanent status of underclassship. And one, we, we anticipate by that point in time, based on all the research that's coming to us, that the next generation of whites gonna be more anti-black than they've been since the civil rights movement. Two, we anticipate by the same token, about 86 million Hispanics coming into the United States and about 41 million Asians by that point in time, mm -hmm. which is gonna kick black folk out of being the majority minority in the society, mm -hmm. uh, down to a minority minority. We've been number two in the society for 400 years as a group. We're gonna become number four. And, uh, and if we have not gotten anything after being number two for 400 years, you guess what's gonna happen when we become number four? Because at that point in time, all the new groups coming into America, they're coming in higher than we are because this country operates off of a preferential acceptance program, mm -hmm. which means that groups are coming in based on skin color, they're going from the lightest down to the darkest, light, yellow, brown, black. And that's what our immigration laws are based on. And black folk would not be able to penetrate through those groups to get to the white society uh, when that happens because those groups owe us nothing. They don't understand our problems and they are competitive with us and we don't begin to be a little more aggressive about being in a competitive posture. They're gonna eat our lunch. You, you see you guys, this is clear, all right? And let me tell you this, being an immigrant myself, I, I never understood what it was like until I moved to Poland and then I started to be in the community with you know, I was no longer in the African-American community. I was in the community in, in Poland, right? So that put me in the community that was mostly African. That was my first time experiencing that. They're coming to live in Uganda as an immigrant. Look, you 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 don't, you, you gotta help each other because 
you don't know the economy. If if a bunch of us moved to Ghana, we would have to solely depend on each other to do things. The difference is in America, we don't feel like we need to do that because we feel like we're also American. However, these other groups, they know they're not American when they come here. Even when they get citizenship, they understand that they're not gonna be even as American as you who are blacks. So what do they do? They try to work together and stick together and they help each other. He even mentions it, right? The Hispanic man, he goes, when a Hispanic person starts a business, that business usually is gonna be successful. We already know when we start a black business that we're already trying to start on shaky terms. And I'm trying to send the message because as somebody who really understands life, maybe a little bit more better than I did even like four or five years ago, black people really gotta start to work together. This is something I'm gonna be pushing for the rest of my time here. If I'm on YouTube, I don't, social media, this is something that is paramount. I'm not gonna get away from this message. So if you don't like the videos, then you can leave, it's fine. I'm not going to get away from the fact that as black people, black men in particular, because again, you are at the bottom of the totem pole in all of this in comparison to the other groups. Look at black women. I, I talked about black women getting what? All of that money from Goldman Sachs, $10 billion for black. They're gonna help 1 million black women get business loans and try to help them in the economy. That's what black women are fighting for. Black men don't even really have that sort of agenda on the table. So now when we're talking about helping each other, there's nobody who needs to help each other more than the black men. And all of that stunning he was talking about, trying to stun on somebody, trying to see who's the best undercut each other. We all know that this is, this is a behavior that is true with a lot of our people. We're not saying all of our people, but we know that this behavior is true. And that is why when you can come together and work with your people, you can achieve great things. Look at the Earn Your Leisure YouTube channel. I mean, these guys came out, they did a financial business channel in black America, which is known for not being able to produce nothing like that. Like we all know black people don't love business. These guys have, have completely annihilated that myth. All right. These guys are getting billionaires like Robert Smith. They're getting Steve Harvey. That's what happens when you work with your people, you can achieve things. That's why we can't have businesses because we have business. We don't have any communities around the business. We don't, we don't, we don't have networks around the business. So we are, we're missing opportunities. And these people are driving these nice cars. They have these nice homes. That's because their people are working together to get that. And we have to work together to get that. It's just, we have to do it. Like we, we cannot get away from that. I might be one of the only YouTubers that, that is like all the time you hear me talking about this because this is something that needs to happen like now. If you gotta get in a room and fight with black people, do it. At least you're in the same room. Then eventually you can come together and work together. But this is how you create your wealth. This is how you create your opportunities. You cannot create your opportunities in the corporate structure so much so. You're gonna create your opportunities in, in niche communities, business communities, uh, creating functions, creating events. I'm telling you, that's how it's gonna happen. And we need to get our people on board. We got the numbers. We have talented black men. We got talented black women. We have the numbers. We have the money. We have the know-how. We just don't have the mindset. And now these other people are coming in and, and proving that we don't have that. And we wanna get upset, but we gotta look at it for what it is. We need to get on, T time is ticking. Like the old folk used to say, while the blood is running warm in your veins, we need to consider this quite seriously. And I'm on the same page as Dr. Claude Anderson. If, if we do not have a stronger position, these people are gonna eat our lunch. This is so true, I see it all the time. I see it all the time. They're going to eat your lunch, bro. This is, this is what's gonna happen. All you're gonna be there is sitting on the side complaining about it. Like even starting off talking to black people, hello, how you doing? I know that's hard because we just want to stare at each other. We got to start somewhere. So guys, what do you think? It's your boy, O'Shea Duke Jackson. Back at it again with another episode of The Celebrity Drunk. Richard, your father, you do scrape the bell. We're out.